Hi there, and thanks for joining me for our next video in our series on writing for AP History. So we're going to be looking at the contextualization point today. I'm your APUSH Lady Boss. I have 10 years experience teaching AP US History. I have been an AP grader for five years, and I have my master's in American History. And so you can trust that I have done a lot of work to make this as simple as possible and help you to achieve the contextualization point. If you would like a um, notes guide to follow along as we work through this video, check the description below and go ahead and click to download. So first we wanna understand what the College Board describes on the rubric. So we need to describe a broader historical context relevant to the prompt. To earn this point, the response must relate to the topic of the prompt, or to broader historical events, developments, or processes that occur before during or continue after the time frame of the question. This point is not awarded for merely a phrase or reference. It's one point, and these rules apply to all the AP histories, AP US, AP World, and AP European history. So the key here is that contextualization can occur before, during, and continue after. So what is contextualization? It's the broader situation in which the prompt exists or happens, which helps in understanding it. This is most often found in the introduction paragraph before the thesis statement. So what I'm going to be teaching you to do in this video is I'm going to try to simplify it to help you ensure that you get the point. Are there going to be other ways to get the point? Absolutely. But my goal here is to help you find the easiest and quickest way to get this point. So when I teach this, I teach it as the idea of dominoes. So if you ever had dominoes growing up, or maybe you still play with them, but you stack them up, and when you knock down one, hopefully the rest of them fall down. So the easiest way to get the contextualization point, I think, is to think about what is happening directly before the prompt, and then explain that. Now, it's really important that we cover the difference between background and contextualization. A lot of people use this word background as a way for students to understand what they need to do. But oftentimes, when students simply write the background, they forget the importance of the relationship between the dominoes. So if you are going with the idea of what is happening directly before the prompt, sometimes you just spew out facts. You say that this was happening before, but you forget the key. It must relate to the prompt and you have to make that connection. You cannot depend on the grader to make that connection for you. And so it's really important after you describe what's happening before the prompt that you connect it to your thesis. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So first we have to determine the situation. So we have to consider broader contexts that are relevant to the topic of the prompt. Now, when I teach students to work on contextualization, I always require them to work on their thesis first. So you get your prompt, you brainstorm what you're going to write about in your paper, you create your basic outline, and then you write your thesis then do context. So if you don't know how to write a thesis, I encourage you to check out my earlier video on how to write a thesis, but I'm assuming that by this point, you know what your argument is, you've categorized it, you know your body paragraphs, you know your thesis. So now you're going back to contextualization. So think about some, these are some of the ways that you can think about what are the broader contexts? Sometimes it's helpful to remember the themes that are mentioned. These are the themes of AP US history. So sometimes migration and settlement or work exchange and technology, those can be themes that draw some ideas into your mind about broader contexts. Other times students really latch onto the Persia acronym. So the political, economic, religious, social, intellectual, and artistic trends that are happening in the period. And I would encourage you to really focus on the political, economic, and social. So think about what trends are happening during this time, and that might help you consider a broader context. For students that don't quite grasp these ideas, I tell them to just brainstorm words that end in ION 
or ISM. So I've listed nine examples, but there's numerous others here. Expansion. This is a theme that happens throughout history, and it's one that can be relevant to a whole variety of prompts. Colonization, revolutions, immigration, globalism. All of these are huge, broad contexts that relate to a variety of prompts. So if you can consider, if you can brainstorm some of these words, that might help you think about something that's relevant to the prompt. So then you continue on, and I'm going to give you a sample thesis here. Now this is, I'm sorry, I'm giving you a sample prompt. This prompt is from the APUSH test from 2021. However, the content is relevant to all the AP histories. Evaluate the extent to which transatlantic voyages in the period from 1491 to 1607 affected the Americas. So first you need to brainstorm. Consider before, during, and after this time period. Now, you want to generally stick to 50 to 100 years and as, as close to 50 years as possible. Really, when we're thinking AP US history, it's a tight time frame. And so 50 years is going to be a better time frame than European history or world history that are looking at a wider time span. So here are some that are related to this prompt colonization, the Renaissance, scientific revolution, continental isolation, and religious competition. A lot of these pertain to the words that end in ION or ISM. They also, you can see I've got a religious competition that's connected to the Persia acronym or the Renaissance that's artistic, scientific revolution that's related to the theme of work exchange and technology. And so you can see that I've pulled these words from these different ways of brainstorming. Okay, so things to remember, you cannot double dip which means you cannot earn a point twice. You can't earn a point for evidence and also use the same material to earn the contextualization point. So you must avoid using evidence or topics that will be found in your body paragraphs. So for example, when students write this essay, they often talk about the Columbian exchange. So if your evidence in your body paragraph is going to be the Columbian exchange, you cannot also use Columbian exchange as your contextualization. So it's really important to know what you're going to write about in your body paragraphs before you come up with your contextualization. Another important thing to know is that your Contextualization cannot be an absolute truism. Now, here's what I mean by an absolute truism. During this period, there is migration. This is pretty much true throughout American history. You need to give more. It has to be more specific. You could use migration as your contextualization, but it cannot be this vague. So after you has determined the situation, what I'm going to use for my example is religious competition. So you're going to use this formula. Step one, introduce the broader context, focus on time and place. Step two, provide specific evidence. Three, provide a second piece of evidence. This is optional. I think it just ensures that you get the point, but sometimes if you're short on time or don't quite have the evidence, you can absolutely skip sentence three. And then the fourth, the most important link to the thesis. So this is the thesis that I have written. Despite the Americas remaining primarily controlled by American Indian tribes because of significant changes in demographics and new economic systems and opportunities, the impact of transatlantic voyages was consequential and catastrophic. So my, con my context must relate to this thesis. So here's how I introduce the broader context. During the 15th and 16th centuries in Europe, there was intense religious competition. Do I have time and place? Yep. Have I introduced the broader context, religious competition? There it is. Now I'm going to give specific evidence. The Protestant Reformation was a religious movement in Europe in which a new group of Protestants emerged and broke away from the Catholic Church. Some countries remained Catholic, such as Spain, while others became aligned with Protestantism, like England. All right, so I've got specific evidence in there related to my broader context of religious competition. Now I have to link to the thesis. 
these religious differences fueled competition between nations and this competition inspired voyages across the Atlantic. So then it flows very easily into the, um, the focus of the prompt, which is the effects of transatlantic voyages. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice these contextualization statements. Relating back to this prompt, here's your first one. Before the discovery of the Americas, native tribes and peoples lived in peace. Then Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, and he brought a long train of opposition, killing and stealing of the land. Because native civilizations were organized in a much different manner than those in Europe, colonizers saw them as less civilized and therefore they could steal their land and kill their people. So looking at this, think about, does it have time and place? Does it explain a broader context? Does it have examples? Is it historically accurate? Well, this response does not, oh, this response does not earn the point because it does not succeed in describing a broader historical context relevant to the prompt. The start of the response includes an untrue assertion that native people lived in peace before the arrival of Europeans, an attempt and an attempt to place the topic in context of European views of civilization, which is vague. All right. So while this is lengthy, it seems like it's got some good information here. It does not reach the point of getting, uh, it does not get to the point because it's got some untrue information and it is, um, it is vague. So let's look at another one. The Americas were largely free of European involvement before Columbus discovered the Americas in 1492 in the service of the Spanish monarchs. Native Americans had created complex and developed societies such as the Pueblos, the Mayans, and the Iroquois. So what do you think? Does this one to, um, give a broader context, time and place? Does it have some specific examples? The College Board determined, yes, it does earn one point um, in the first two sentences of the paragraph. These two sentences combine to describe the context of American isolation, largely free of European involvement, and it describes the complex and developed societies. It is relevant to the prompt because it establishes the pre-existing conditions that were affected by the voyages and weren't just a passing reference. So you may look at this and think, this is too challenging for me right now. I need a quick and easy way to get this point um, without having to do quite that much. So remembering the rubric, we have to describe the broader context and you have to relate the topic to broader historical events. I'm gonna encourage you to really focus on the before. Don't try to think of something that's happening during or continue after, and really remember the dominoes, those dominoes stacking up. What is the one that's coming before the prompt and what is knocking it down? So consider cause and effect. So your quick formula is to state the situation, provide the cause and give the effect. This is where you link to the prompt and thesis. So state the situation. The Protestant Reformation occurred in Europe during the 16th century. Give the cause. There was significant religious competition between Protestants and Catholics. And then give the effect. Because of this competition, countries like Spain and Britain engaged in transatlantic voyages. This is much shorter it is less detailed and it is um, more directly giving the examples. This is something that you can do if you're struggling with the other formula is just focus on cause and effect. What is the cause of the topic of the prompt and then how does it connect? What is the effect? I hope that this was really helpful for you in understanding contextualization. If it was, please like and subscribe.